Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylee and today we are back on my island Inkblot for another speed build video. If you're new here, Inkblot is my all black and white kit core island and today we're building the beginning of a highway overlook and three villager yards. This was a super fun build so let's get right into it. So as a quick overview, this is what we'll be working on today. We'll be building behind resident services that backs up to a big block of terraforming. And then on top we'll have a few villager homes and then a highway across the back of the resident services that looks over the rest of the island city. Alright, I'm starting at resident services for this build and my inspiration for this part of the island came from these pictures I found on Pinterest. So I'm going to recreate a version of this but in all black and white. To start, I'm covering this whole area in the grey tiles and then I'll go back through and mix it up a bit with the two alternate versions of the tile just to add that kid core feeling. And then basically for this whole part of this build, I'm just using different items to look like the cityscape and I'm trying to create a few unique types of buildings with a mix of items. For this area, I used a mix of the storefronts, castle and medieval walls, the loft beds and fences layered with simple panels that I customized in the window design. I like these window designs a lot because I use the same colors I used for the shop design so far and when I make more stores, I can actually use these windows as well. And compared to the inspiration photos, I have used more items to make it look a little bit more layered and random because I feel like it makes it look more kid core like when it's not 100% the same shape. I also like that I decided to put the cityscape in this area because it makes resident services look a little bit more interesting and I really wanted to have the highway overlook on this island and this city build does a good job at hiding the edge of the cliff. Using the loft beds with a simple panel brings me back to the days of the 1.0 fake buildings and I still really love how these look. So I did decide to still throw them in in combination with a lot of the building items we got in the 2.0 update. And then there are certain areas that still had a whole tile left, so I went through and added some extra items to detail up the area. I do think I actually want to go back and add a few more items to this area, but for now I do like how it looks. And now I'm moving my attention over to the terraformed area. So my idea for this area is to have the three houses in the spot when you first walk up the incline, and then across the back behind resident services we'll have that strip of road and that will be our overlook or perspective lookout. To start I'm laying down some of our light dirt in game pathing. And I am adding this for the strip of sidewalk between the houses in the neighborhood just so it shows up on the map, but then for our road I do have to lay down six rows of the dirt code for our big road path behind resident services. Also, I just want to mention, if we were able to lay down pathing how we're able to in Happy Home Paradise, this process would be so much easier. Because right now, I basically have to lay down the six rows twice, because I have the dirt pathing and then the custom codes to go on top. So hopefully in the next Animal Crossing game, whenever that comes out, they make the pathing mechanic a little easier, just like Happy Home Paradise. And then after our big road code is all laid out, I'm going through and adding our gray tile code in a little box shape around where the villagers' houses will be. Then I like to mark out where I place the villager houses with some of the in-game pathing because I want to make sure I get the house in the exact spot I want and I can look at the placement on the map since I am using the in-game pathing. And then I'm just going to repeat the process of outlining the villagers yards with the gray tile and marking out the house placement for the other two villager houses. Thank you. 
Now our cliff is all laid out with our three houses and our highway overlook. Next up is to decorate the villager yards and to start this process I'm going to use some of our black vertical board fencing to line the back and the side of each yard. Between the two houses in the front, I'm lining each side of the sidewalk with three trees across from each other. And then I'm going to put some of our plain party lights in between the rows of trees so we have this cute little light up tree walkway. And not only can you walk through these when you come visit the neighborhood, but you can also see the trees and the lights when you're down on the ground level looking at the bakery and laundromat and I just thought that was so cute. Now I'm decorating each of the villager yards. And surprisingly, I've never actually decorated individual villager yards before, but I love the idea of each villager having their own unique yard to match their backstory. So this is the first yard and I'm decorating this for Dottie and she's gonna be a little gardener. For the back of the yard against the fence, I'm giving her a wooden storage shed to keep all of her supplies and a little wooden box to hold her cassette player. I want each of the villagers to have their individual music playing, and I got this idea from Carrot Cake over on Instagram. I haven't picked out the music I want for each villager yet, so if you have any ideas for these three yards, let me know in the comments. I want the songs to match the kind of vibe of each yard. And then in the front of the yard, I put a watering can and a shovel for her, and I'm creating this little area for her black and white cosmos. I started out with two rows of three, but I thought it looked a little empty, so I do go back in a little bit to add another row in the front. And then I wasn't loving how empty the front of the house looked with just the snow, so I'm giving her a little patio with this black wooden deck code, and I think this makes the area look a little bit more complete. Next to our row of trees and party lights, I'm adding a combination of our flowers and shrubs to fill this little gap. And I was so sad, Dottie came over and started watering the flowers and I took out my camera because I thought it was so cute and of course she immediately stopped once my camera was out. I don't know why this happens, Nintendo, if you're watching this, please just let us take cute pictures of our villagers without them immediately walking away when they're doing something cute. Anyways, I finished off Dottie's yard by giving her a little mailbox and a custom designed cushion so it looks like she got a package delivered. And now I'm moving over to the next house to decorate the yard. This is actually Admiral's house who will not be staying on Inkblot, but I still wanted to decorate the yard for the eventual tenant. For this yard, we're gonna be decorating a little outdoor gym. And since I don't think people wanna lift weights standing in the snow, I covered the whole yard with the black wooden deck code. And thankfully, a lot of the gym equipment in Animal Crossing comes in a gray or black variant, so I still had plenty of items to pick from to keep with our black and white theme. So for this area, we're using a speed bag, a pull-up bar, a little table for their protein powder and music, and then some weightlifting equipment like a barbell and the small dumbbell that you can get from group stretching. Onto the third and final yard for this neighborhood, and I decided I wanted to continue the line of trees because I liked how it bordered the yards in the front two houses, and then I'm also placing a line of shrubs and flowers as well. For this yard, I'm making an outdoor movie area, so we're covering this whole area in the black deck coat as well. And to be honest, I don't love how this yard turned out. It looks a little too empty for me. I might go back and adjust this one a little bit. I think I want to add a line of hedges along the backside of the fencing from Admiral's yard, because that sidewalk area makes it look too empty. But let me know in the comments what else you think I can add to this yard for the home theater setup.
But here's our final build. But that's the end of the video, thanks so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure to give the video a like, comment, and to subscribe to the channel. If you watched the end of the video, let me know in the comments what other kind of yards I should add to this island. Bye friends!